In this episode, SpaceX gets ready for SN5 testing, NASA unveils its suborbital plans, and NASA selects Virgin Galactic to train private astronauts. Starship Update Last week Monday, June 15th, SpaceX conducted initial pressure testing with the Starship SN7 test tank. During that test, the tank made it to a pressure of 7.6 bar, before developing a leak. In the days following the test, the team in Boca Chica applied reinforcement wells to the tank and installed a double vent valve ahead of the second round of testing. On Tuesday of this week, June 23rd, SpaceX conducted a subsequent pressure test, this time pressurizing the tank to failure. This time, Zeus was spotted on the scene to track any anomalies. There's no confirmation just yet from Elon on what pressure the tank achieved. SN5 Progress Now that SN7 testing has been completed, SpaceX has almost immediately turned its attention to SN5. After a prolonged stay in the high bay, SN5 was transported to the launch site on Wednesday, June 24th. So far, SN5 testing is scheduled to begin early next week on June 29th. All of SpaceX's business segments now seem to be merging now more than ever. For the first time ever, Starlink terminals have now been spotted in public. More specifically, they've been spotted at the site in Boca Chica and at another SpaceX site in Wisconsin. So far, the design matches Elon's previous description of a thin, flat, round UFO on a stick, or a small to medium-sized pizza. According to previous design specs, the terminals are 0.48 meters in diameter. Elon has previously described that one of the biggest challenges with Starlink is not manufacturing the satellites themselves, but driving down the cost of the terminals. On an episode of Aviation Week's Check 6 podcast back in May of 2020, Elon stated that, I think the biggest challenge will be with the user terminal and getting the user terminal cost to be affordable. For reference, the lowest cost of a phase array antenna has been estimated to be around $1,000. SpaceX's goal is to bring that cost down to about 100 to 300 USD. Elon stated this back in 2015. So far, SpaceX has deployed about 540 satellites for Starlink Constellation. The next Starlink launch, the 10th Starlink launch overall, Starlink V1L9, will bring the total number of satellites to just about 600. In a different episode of Check 6, President and COO of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, revealed that SpaceX would begin rolling out the service in a more public way after the 14 Starlink launch, so by the summer of 2020. Last week Friday, June 19th, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein announced NASA's upcoming plans to fly astronauts on commercial suborbital spacecraft. The tweet emphasized NASA's commitment to increase innovation through collaboration with commercial partners. This week, more details that have expanded on Bridenstine's initial Twitter announcement have now been revealed. Virgin Galactic to train private astronauts and coordinate flights to the ISS. To start on Monday, June 22, Virgin Galactic announced that it has signed a space act agreement with NASA's Johnson Space Center for private orbital space flights to the space station. As part of the agreement, Virgin Galactic will develop a new private orbital astronaut readiness program for NASA. In addition to this, Virgin is also tasked with identifying launch providers and organizing space flights for individuals or companies interested in purchasing private astronaut missions. Virgin will also coordinate in-orbit and ground resources for these missions. Virgin Galactic's new agreement with NASA is a bit of an expansion on its original business plan. Over the years, Virgin Galactic has been known for its plans to offer flights to the edge of space on its suborbital space plane VSS Unity launched from its carrier aircraft VMS Eve. Over 600 customers have reserved seats at a cost of about 200,000 to 250,000 USD per person. And the waitlist is even longer, surpassing 3,000 people. As part of its customer service offering, and in an attempt to enhance the customer experience, Virgin developed a future astronaut readiness program, designed to familiarize future space tourists with aspects of the space environment like microgravity and g-forces. It's likely the company will apply insights gained from their existing astronaut readiness program to the new private orbital astronaut program designed for NASA. Commercial suborbital providers to offer flights for NASA astronauts. On the heels of Virgin Galactic's announcement, on Tuesday, June 23rd, NASA released a blog post revealing even more details on the agency's plans for these suborbital flights. NASA has now created a suborbital crew office within NASA's commercial crew program tasked with laying the groundwork for flying NASA personnel on this class of vehicle. 
The agency has also released an RFI in an attempt to solicit responses from commercial suborbital transportation systems providers. According to a statement released by NASA, commercial suborbital spaceflight capabilities are anticipated to be more accessible, affordable, and available than missions to the International Space Station, and could provide NASA additional commercial human spaceflights to conduct such activities as testing and qualification of spaceflight hardware, human-tended microgravity research, and additional training opportunities for astronauts and other NASA personnel. This is quite a step for NASA. According to the statement, the last suborbital flight for NASA astronauts was at the dawn of NASA's human spaceflight program, with Project Mercury and the X-15 hypersonic program. It also signifies NASA's commitment to its new LEO commercialization strategy, a plan that aims to open up LEO and build a thriving LEO economy. We've already seen a number of positive steps in terms of that strategy in this year alone. Space Adventures and Axiom already announced their plans early in the year to fly private astronauts to the ISS and to space respectively on SpaceX's Crew Dragon. And just last month, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine confirmed reports that Tom Cruise is working with NASA and SpaceX to shoot a movie aboard the ISS sometime in the future. It should be quite exciting to see the list of names and projects Virgin brings to the table, as well as future NASA astronaut training on suborbital flights. While we await for NASA to refine its suborbital plans, for now we can expect SN5 testing and a Starlink launch in the coming days.